I'm the Reverend Dr. William L. Johnson III here with our morning meditation. Every week, I try to share these messages, hope that will inspire and encourage you and others as you're journeying through life. We are aware that as we do so, life keeps on lifing. Things start happening. Things happen on our right, on our left. We see it on the news. We hear about it from friends. But sometimes as we're journeying through life, it sometimes happens to us. And when things start happening to us, we need encouragement. We need inspiration. We need friends to help us navigate through it. So I want you to know that I'm glad to be able to share with you. We hope that these words uh, will help you. We hope that these messages will encourage you. We hope they will inspire you because that's the purpose of them. Now to our morning meditation. Today's morning meditation is entitled Looking for Something Unseen. Looking for Something Unseen. It is an amazing thing to find yourself in search of something that seems so elusive, but you keep on being driven to try to find it. Some people have things like hope or happiness or joy or those things that seem to be untangible, but however, we cannot get our hands on them. <laughs> it's incredible to find yourself looking for what you cannot see. However, I'm aware that as we are journeying through life, we wake up, we begin our days, we go through the process of hoping that whatever we have done, whatever we have done in our careers, whatever we are doing with our families, whatever activities we find ourselves in, whatever boards or organizations or clubs or committees we're on, whatever we may find ourselves engaged in, we have this hope that this elusive thing happiness and joy and peace will be ours because of what we've given to those efforts. However, what I'm also learning is that the unseen things in life often happen to be the things that bless us the most. It is those things, or those things rather, that have a way of bringing meaning to life, giving us a sense of self, a sense of purpose, a sense that guides us through life. So I'm asking the question of you today, what is it that is driving you? What is it that motivates you? What is it that inspires you? Are you looking for something that will then in turn make your life worth having, worth living? What is worthy of your time? What is worthy of your effort? What is worthy of your passion? What is worthy of your life? I have to admit that I've not always been wise about how to do that. I may spend my time doing things that I realize after uh, looking at them and reflecting over them that I probably was just wasting my time. I don't know about you, uh, if you felt that way, but you're like, I don't know what I did with the time or what I did with the effort, what I did with uh, the sweat and tears and the passions, but I wish I had all of that back. That's what happens when you get to a certain age. You start to reflect over your life and say, wow, that's dumb. That didn't make a lot of sense. That wasn't great. But what I've learned is, is that all of it was in the pursuit of looking for something unseen. I, I realize that in our search for what it's going to be, what's meaningful and what's hopeful and what's helpful for our lives, the unseen things that we're looking for are reflections of the things that we wish we had internally. So the idea of looking for the unseen things out there, you might just find it in here. <laughs> I'm convinced. There is uh, a psalm in, in the scripture, the 73rd Psalm, where in which the writer of the psalm looks around and says, you know, uh, I am not the greatest person. I don't do all the things that I should do. I'm paraphrasing, uh, if, if you will. But I've learned that as I have tried to do the things that I should, that I'm probably coming up short. And then I look and compare myself with people who don't even put the effort in that I put in, who don't uh, sacrifice the way I sacrifice, who have never struggled with the things that I've had to struggle with. And I wonder how in the world they keep making progress. And it seems like I'm just struggling along the way. And then the writer says, well, then I looked around and I looked a little longer. And after I looked a while, I found myself in the place where God is, the sanctuary. And once I got there with me and God and God in me, 
I discovered and learned a lot about what I was so preoccupied about, that it's really not about how they do well and how they never struggle or how they get through things because those things are really temporary. But it's about having the ability to see how lucky I am to be living the life that I have and being the person that I am because my creator made me this way. In other words, he said, I didn't see it before, but now I do now. I see my life in a different prism, in a different way of seeing myself. So let me share with you what I think is really important, a couple of things, and then I'll let you go. In order to see uh, the unseen things, or when you're looking for something unseen that matters in your life, first you have to take a moment to start seeing things as they are. Not the way you want them to be, not the way you hope they would be, not even in the way that you think because things haven't worked out the way you would want them to be, how bad they may seem to be, but to see them as they are. You know, every now and then we get these glasses, these ability to see ourselves and to be able to look clearly. So I go to the doctor every so often, once a year, and let them check my eyes. Well, uh, I might not be a a great case study for this because I have some other things going on with my vision. But for most of us who have to do that, the older we get, the more we discover that we need adjustments to our eyes. So they will ask you a question when they're, you're looking through the lens. They, they say, now, which is clearer, thing number one or number two? Which is clearer, number three or number four? And after a while, they all start to look the same to me. But I realize that they are trying to bring focus to my vision for the things that really matter so that I can see them as they are, not as the way I pretended to think I would see them without having help. In other words, that's called focus. And when you find yourself looking for unseen things, you really need to be focused about what's important for you to really see. What about your family? Are they important? What about your friends? Are they important? What about your faith? Is that important? What about your future? Is that important? And if those things are important, and it's important for you to see those things clearly, you really need to make sure you see things as they really are. But also, it's important to see things here. I'm going to go backwards to see things as they really were. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, is a great thing. And we like to reminisce over things. And let me tell you the difference between reminiscing and remembering. To remember is uh, to remember things as they were. To reminisce is to remember the highlights of those moments without dealing with the full package of those memories. So to reminisce, cherry picks all the great moments that you would like to relive. You know, like I remember the good old days. I remember when the moments when we used to be able to watch television and have, have cartoons and to be able to go outside and play. And all those things were wonderful. As well as I also, or that's reminiscing. But when I remember what those mornings were, if you put me in those moments again, I remember not necessarily having enough, not having enough money to make it through worrying about being cold in the winter months because my coat wasn't as warm or uh, I, we found ourselves trying to make our way through the winter or enjoying ourselves, not with being in basking at home with what we had, but trying to figure out how to make fun out of things that didn't have all these bells and whistles that they have now. Those were good days. Remembering helps me to appreciate the good days for what they were, not in the ways in which I try to imagine the way they were. So remember things as they are, remember things as they were. But then I want you to think about if you're going to look for something unseen, you have to see those things as they will be. I know this is the hard part because to see things as they will be, it's like, what do you mean? I don't know what they will be. But I in, engage you in this thought. Imagine yourself and imagine life ahead of you in positive ways rather than negative ones. Try to see your future without the lens of your past guiding you. 
I'll say that again. Try to see your future without the lens of your past guiding you. So many of us find ourselves trying to see our future, trying to look through the lens of the painful past, trying to figure out how to correct. In other words, we may say, I want to do this, but I tell you what, what happened to me, I'll never let it happen to me again. And we shape our futures by what happened in our past rather than shaping our futures with a sense of what the past was, but not being uh, bound to it. And so I want to encourage you to look for something unseen. Look for the unseen in the way things are. Look for the unseen in the way things really were. But look for the unseen in the way in which you hope that they will be not from the lens of a painful past, but for a promising future. Anyway, that's the word, uh, the message, the meditation for today. I'm praying that it will help you as you journey along. Be encouraged. We do this together, walking hand in hand. We're passing through, but it's so good to be able to do it with you. So know that you're loved, you're appreciated, and you're irreplaceable. Have a great day. Have a great week. And yes, indeed, have a great life. We appreciate you. Have a great time. Let us know what you think about these messages. We really do appreciate your feedback. It's great to hear from you. Bye-bye.